My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 1,907 subscribers in over 75 countries. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to any third party outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Service catalog. Variables, fields, all these new terms that come to mind when you're building a custom application within the catalog. And today what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to show you how we're going to pass variable information from an item to the SC rec item table, a field on one of the tables, and we're going to combine a bunch of the variables and put them in the description field, which is basically a large single line text field or a string field on the SC rec item table. So we have our catalog item right here, Aspen contact info. We click in here, and this is just one that I created myself. It has a variable set. I like creating variable sets. Um, some people will use them to um, for for formatting reasons. Maybe you have uh, something like this where you have uh, two columns and then you want <clears throat> a one column within that same section. These are different sections right here, so uh, the formatting is probably different for each section, but um, I'll show you kind of what it um, looks like, this variable set. Variable set <clears throat> we use also to repackage variables and use them amongst many different uh, catalog items without having to uh, reinvent the wheel, so to speak. So I created one that has, you'll see as U description three field, and I'll get to that in a second. But basically we have our first name, last name, cell phone, email address. And what we want to do is we want to take all four of these, four of these, then these are independent uh, fields, excuse me, variables on a catalog item. And we're going to have them condensed into one field. And then this U description three here, uh, I'm going to throw that into one field just to show you how, you know, what we would say the normal method is for populating or throwing variables into a field. Um, right now, the way it works, I guess, and maybe someone can correct me on this, but if you're using the SC rec item table, um, you have to script it out. So if you're going to use the out of the box table to move a variable, to from an item to uh, the SC rec item table, then you have to script it out. If you're doing a record producer, um, then all you have to do is name it the same thing as the actual field. So if the variable name matches the field name, it'll automatically pull and there's no scripting required. And I don't really know why the out of the box table doesn't do that, but um, we'll just go through it right now and I'll show you how to, uh, to move that stuff. So um, here's our variable set again. I don't know why I have that twice. Anyway, um, here's our U description three. I just want to show this as single line text, and it, it is not going to move on the first try, and the other ones will. And I'm going to show you three different uh, formatting types that I used. So here we have Aspen description is our U description three, and I just put down here must be must be scripted. And then we have our first name, last name cell phone and email address and what I made here was basically like a contact form where people can put in their contact info and um, it's all uh, and, and basically the, let's say the, the customer requirement is and hypothetically that you know whoever it is in the organization they just want like a little scratch pad um, for the people who are uh, fulfilling the item to be able to maybe make notes next to the name or the cell phone number, email address, or whatever it is, and they want it all in one field. Now, one of the disadvantages of this you'll see is that really it's not, you can't really report off this stuff. I mean, you can, but it would be kind of hard to do. So I'll show you right now when I click order now what the output looks like. So we're taking all of these, and then it's going to come up to the standard screen here. And we'll go to our item. So if we go to SC rec item dot list, it'll bring us here. So this is our this is our list right here. I'm just gonna refresh it. And we should see 104. Okay. So now let's just make sure that is yep, see here it came up on a different window. And now what we're going to do is kick this out into a separate window. I'm going to show you three different types. So 
here I have first name, last name, cell phone, and now it's all a different line. And we have, um, and in order to get these labels in here, I'll show you how to do that too. Then on the next one, I said, you know what? Maybe we just want name. And then we want the first name and last name, then cell phone, then email address. And then I said, you know what? Let's, let's do a third formatting option, right? Let's not limit us to just this stuff here. Let's do without the labels. Let's do just the first name, last name. Um, and then I'll keep the labels in for cell phone and email address. <clears throat> and then later on, what we'll do is we'll take description three and we'll move it over. I'll show you how to do that. So let's take a look at our workflow. So all this is being pushed via a workflow that's on the SC rec item table. So if we go to our properties, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but I do want to show that this is hitting the SC rec item table. So as you can see, our table is SC rec item, and I just named the workflow populate variables. Now, if we go back to our item, just make sure that for your process engine tab, you have here for your workflow populate variables. And you can see here it's a catalog item. Now, if it says record producer up here, <clears throat> Um, remember that all you'll have to do is just name the, the, the variable the same thing as the field on that table. So let's go back. Let's take a look here. Okay, so here we have uh, the name of our field is current.description on the RITM. So if we two-finger click if you're on a Mac or right-click, you'll see here description is our name. And we can take a look at the other ones. Here's description U description one. And here's U description two. And this is U description three. Great. We have all that there. And now if we look in our workflow, we'll see here. Now I put in uh, commas here, right? First name. So I'm turn to blue text. Then we're gonna do plus, because this is the first thing really. This is the first um, item if you will or object in the chain then we gotta do a plus then we gotta do current dot variables and then this right here is gonna be our variable name plus then this at forward slash n or backslash n and the commas that's gonna s tell the system hey make a you know basically hit enter and do it on a separate line then we got another plus and then we have another label then we have another or then we have our variables here last name and so forth right so it just keeps repeating there. And by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll try to put these in the YouTube description, but sometimes they won't let me do like forward slash or whatever. It kicks out an error. So um, if you need a copy of this, just um, you know, just shoot me an email or whatever. Hit me up on LinkedIn, and I'll be more than happy to give it to you. Okay, so that was our first option there. Now let's go to description one and take a look at this one. This one's a little bit different but almost the same thing. So I started out with, okay, different name, right? So our field name is different. Excuse me, our variable name is different. Oh no, our field name is different. This is, this is the field name, sorry. It's early in the morning here. Just had my coffee, so uh, a little bit foggy still. So here's our name, right? So name matches up with name. And then we did first name plus, and then you'll see here I put in commas, there's a space between the two. Now remember you have to have that space in there for it to have that formatting. Otherwise it's gonna pretty much run up right first name is gonna run up right on the last name. Won't look too pretty. And then we have our labels here and then email address. Now we wanted that third option, right? Now this is just the commas. Now here what do we do? Uh, first two we got no labels and then right here is where our comma is. Now there's a space after the comma, right? So that way it doesn't run up on cell phone and cell phone doesn't run up on email address, right? And at the very end, don't forget your semicolon and you should be good to go. So let's add this. And this, I guess you would say is maybe the normal method, the one-to-one, the -one. you know, if you wanna hit, uh, if we wanna put you description three, into variable uh, or make the field u description three the same as um, the variable, and this is how we do it. Let's see if this works. Maybe I got that wrong. I don't. I didn't, I didn't test that out. I tested out all the other three, but I didn't test that one out for whatever reason. So we can go ahead and plug that in, and then what we'll do is 
Let's go back to our confirmation screen. I'm just going to ratchet it back a status. Excuse me, a screen. All right. So let's do, I don't know, JM as the initials, just to signify that's different. I'm going to hit order now. Come on. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to refresh this screen. Now we should have 105 coming out of the chute. Come on now. All right. And there you go. There's our description three, right? Must be scripted dash JM. So you have basically four different formatting styles. Most people are familiar with this one um, in order to move it over just to a one-to-one. -one. You could do this with um, almost any type of field. I know sometimes with some of these field types, um, maybe it, I want to say it's a reference. You have to do like a get to split dot get display value or something like that for some of these. Um, so they can be a, a little bit tricky um, sometimes. And if you want to see the workflow, just hit show workflow. And this will show you the what we would call the context that actually ran against um, this item. So we can see here it went all the way through and it went to finished. So if you find that helpful, um, if you could click like um, up in you know, right next to, uh, I don't know, I guess it's about right here or something like that. Um, that way I know that you like stuff like this. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.